All right, so here's the model. Um, there's uh, just like the uh, project guideline. Actually, let me pull this up real quick so I have both. Okay, so there's the main entrance, the entry, like this sort of uh, machining station, there's the inspection station, and then the main exit station. And that's modeled uh, fairly straightforward. Um, this is our enter area, like where the models are created, assigned, and then they leave. There is the entering the conveyor belt. There is the machine lines A, B, C, and D. There is the exit the conveyor station, uh, and then the inspection station, and then the main exit. Um, and then that can be mapped directly from the entrance being here, the um, conveyor entry being right here, A, B, C, D being A, B, C, D, the model or the, uh, the machine line conveyor exit being right here, which is also right here, inspection station, and then the main exit. And that, that closely follows um, the sort of orientation that this model is in. This top part is not in sort of a geographic order, um, it is uh, actually more geographically located correctly in this section. Um, things are more to scale of what the model gives as parameters with these distances. Um, but I actually have a drawing which uh, I did with a ruler, uh, which I can upload, which uh, gives us the exact distances. And these are approximations of the routes that I chose. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So first off, we have the entry or the create section. Uh, the create section, let me get to it real quick. There's, there's three creates because there's three um, items. There's entity one, and anyone's created here. Uh, it has a value of 21.3, which was created by um, Alex. Uh, it's a constant, and it's in minutes. Uh, same with here, another constant, create entity two, and then create three. Create three, it's in minutes, 11.5. Um, it creates one entry, or one entity. These all create one entity, and they all create entities in the beginning, creating it at the very same, at the exact same time. But as time progresses, you can imagine that this is gonna go off every 21.3 seconds. And so they're gonna become out of sync, which kind of randomizes the order that they're released. Next is they each receive an assignment. Um, they receive a attribute entity dot sequence. Um, there's three sequences, as you know, um, sequence uh, for one A, for part one, it's A, B, C, D, B, C, A, or B, C, B inspection. Um, and it follows for the rest of them. Each uh, sign gives it a different sequence. So uh, create one or entity one gets um, sequence one, entity two gets sequence two, entity three gets sequence three. Then there is a station. These are connected. Sorry. Then it creates a station. The station doesn't do anything, but you need a station to establish the starting part of a uh, of a. Uh, transfer route um, for the uh, forklifts. So you always need to the first station so that the forklifts know where to start. Um, and then it ha hits this leave uh, node and it's the leave main entrance. There is zero delay um, in the model. It gives us uh, zero delay for, uh, let's see, the time for loading and unloading in the inspection area and in the areas is negligible. So we understand that there's zero delay for uh, parts entering it. It's a trans it's a request transporter. It's a queue. It requests transporter one. Transporter one is the only transporter in this entire model. Um, and has a connection type transport by sequence. Everything in this model, every single station leave is by sequence. Um, we established the sequence in the very beginning of the model and the model and each entity follows its sequence. Next, um, all parts, if you follow the model, they all go to the entry, um, no matter what, no matter if it's part one, two, or three, it starts at the main entrance, it goes to the entry, it goes around this thing, it gets machined, going from A to B to C to D to A, B, or whatever, then it hits the exit, and then it hits the inspect, and then the main exit. So, likewise, it has to hit the enter conveyor. The enter conveyor does have a 15 second delay. Um, that's actually given here. Uh, where is it? Um, the time, yeah, the time of loading and unloading from the endless band 
is 15 seconds for machine A, B, and C, and to and from the lift truck. So there's a to and from the lift truck. So there is a delay uh, from the lift truck. So the lift truck comes, delivers it, 15 second delay. Uh, it's in seconds. It's, it also frees the transporter. So the transporter needs to be freed for it to then do other tasks. Um, and this is actually technically a station. Uh, this enter, all enters act uh, as a station in uh, arena. Uh, and so that's just sort of a logical thing that comes up later. You'll see this conveyor.station, um, enter conveyor.station later on. Uh, I think that's everything for that. And then it leaves the um, enter conveyor. And it's a 15 second, oh wait, that might be an error. This does not need a 15 second delay. I just realized it should be zero seconds. Um, and it's a convey, and, it's, and then it goes to the connection type convey. So this is why we need the station. This is the main part that matters. The enter frees the transporter, but we need to put it onto the conveyor belt. And so we use this little node right here to essentially transfer it from the transporter directly onto the conveyor. Um, and that's basically its thing. It, it then accesses the conveyor as opposed to, you know, being a part of the transporter and accesses conveyor one. There's only one conveyor in this entire model, and it takes two cells. Um, I'll get into this in a little bit each. Uh, it's kind of difficult to explain right now, but I'll talk about that later, why I choose two cells. Um, it's also a convey, and it's by sequence. Like I said, everything is by sequence. Next, <clears throat> we get to each station. Uh, each station is basically done the same way. Um, the only difference is uh, the timing of the machines. So we'll talk about A, and I think that'll be sufficient to talk about the rest. So first it enters A. It's a it's an exit conveyor. It's a 15 second delay. We talked about uh, earlier that to get on and off the conveyor, it's always 15 seconds. Um, it enters station A. It's an exit conveyor, uh, and it accesses. It's taken from conveyor one. Um, then it goes to a decide. And this decide is really important. Um, I didn't know how to create one process which could have different values. Um, in this, in Arena, in the version that I use, there's the delay type. It can only give one delay, and it doesn't discriminate based off of the um, entity. So it doesn't know if it's part one, two, or three. It just delays it all the same. And because there's three different delays for each part, um, I ended up deciding to use a decide node and then three individual de uh, three individual machines. Um, the decide node is in N way by condition, the condition being the sequence, and that's really important. Um, as we talked about earlier, uh, entity one gets assigned sequence one, so it travels to the top. Entity two gets assigned sequence two in the very beginning, and so it goes to the middle and, and so forth. There is this one thing right here, and this is the else. There's no part in this entire, there's no entity in this entire system which will take this else, but this else is necessary for the model to run. Uh, I talked about earlier, I had an issue where I couldn't get this model to run for about two weeks, and it was created by this. The decide node needs the else to be connected, otherwise it's considered an unconnected exit error. Uh, and the model will not run. And so that's connected up. Even though it doesn't do anything, it's just created so that the model will run. That it, that issue costed me about two weeks of time on this model. Next, we move on to the process modules. There's three, like we talked about, for each uh, part. So it's all machine A. There is only one machine for this, for each, um, like for machine A, machine B, machine C, machine D, there's only a single machine for each. And so these all use a seize delay release, but they actually all share the same resource. So that if if I didn't set it up like that, three machine three parts could enter and they could all be machined at the same time. We want only one to get machined and then only the other to get machined and then only the other to get machined. We only want one thing being machined at a time. And so we want queues to form on each of these. And the way to do that is to make them all share the same resource, machine A, 
and there's only one of the resource. And each is a C's delay release, each with their deterministic value, which is given in the assignment. You know, 110, 140, and 145 seconds, all constants for each. But they all share resource A. They're all C's release delays. And I can give, even go to the resource area, and I could show you uh, that there's only a capacity of one for each. And this is true for the inspection table as well. There's only one resource of machine A. And so as soon as this one's busy, part two can't get machine and part three can't get machine, only part one. Next, it enters the leave node. Leave, um, each of these leave, again, it's by sequence. It's by the conveyor. So these are all in the conveyor. Um, there is a 15 second delay for it to be offloaded and it accesses conveyor one. Each of these also does act, uh, it does is a number of cells, and the number of cells is two. And again, I'll talk about that in a bit. <coughs> Same thing for the rest of them. It's all, you know, enter, sorry. Uh, it's all, you know, exit conveyor, conveyor one, there's a delay. Same thing for each. And you can actually see it down here. They're all 15 second delay for A, B, and C. All 15 second delay, all seconds, all access conveyor, conveyor one, number of cells is two. Okay, and it's all by conveyors and by sequence. Everything's by sequence, and you can all see it here. Lastly, <clears throat> we have the exit conveyor. Just like the entrance conveyor, the exit conveyor needs, there needs to be a station here such that we can move parts from the conveyor onto the forklift. And so this module essentially lets us exit the conveyor. There's a zero second delay, but there is because there, uh, but there is a 15 second delay to load onto the transporter. Um, there's no delay here for exiting the conveyor uh, because that 15 second delay is done in the leave. It's not done in the going from the conveyor. I don't really know if I explained that very well. There's only one 15 second delay. If I added a 15 second delay for it to exit the conveyor and then enter the lift truck, it would be a total delay of 30 seconds. And it's only a 15 second delay. So only one of them has it. I arbitrarily chose the leave node as that. Again, the leave node accesses conveyor one, uh, sorry, transporter one, <coughs> and the connection type is a transporter and it's by sequence. Next it enters the inspection station. Uh, inspection station is, um, one second, probably skip ahead 30 seconds. I'm just responding to a text. Okay, I'm back. Um, so there's the inspection station. Uh, there is a delay of zero seconds. Uh, like I said earlier, there's, in this, there's no the loading time and unloading time from the inspection area and the arrivals area is negligible. So there's negligible time for entering and exiting the inspection station with the forklift. Um, it's, uh, let's see, it's transporter one. It's a, it's a uh, free transporter. So it frees up the transporter for other uses. And then there is the inspection process. And this is a, this is based off of the uh, information that we saw in the, uh, input analyzer. It's a normal distribution <clears throat> with a value of 100 and a standard deviation of 30. It's a seized delay release. It seizes the resource inspection table, and that's it. Uh, and then it leaves inspection. And this is accessing tr uh, requests transporter, transporter one, again, transporter, and then by sequence. So that's that. Now we get to the exit. Exit's simple. It's There's zero delay. It just frees the transporter and it gets the part off and then it goes to the dispose. From there it's disposed. Cool. So that covers the model parts. Um, that leaves the conveyor belt and the transporter. I'll talk about the conveyor belt first. The way that we set the distances in the conveyor belt... Actually, let me talk about this. The, the conveyor belt's kind of confusing. Um, you can't have parts move from... A to C uh, directly. It's on a band uh, that rotates in a circle. I chose clockwise, <clears throat> and it's a unidirectional band, which means that it only travels in one direction. It can't go back and forth. There's only a single line. Um, I chose rotating in a, uh, in a clockwise circle arbitrarily. 
Um, it just seemed like it made sense, especially when so many parts started A and go to B. But again, that's an arbitrary distinction on my part. Um, doesn't necessarily matter. Next, uh, oh, sorry. The, uh, where is it? Advanced transfer, uh, not that one. <clears throat> segments. So there's two things to the segments, or to the conveyor belt. There's the conveyor, <clears throat> where we define things about the conveyor, and then there's the segments, which defines the distances between each. Um, the conveyor. So the conveyor, uh, well, there's units. So the way that conveyors work is they all essentially move in units per second. And units is uh, able to be defined as whatever you want. I defined my units as half a meter. Um, and that's important because a lot of uh, the segments can't be inputted as fractions, or not fractions, but uh, as decimals. They have to be whole numbers. And because some of these sections are only a distance, uh, like this distance from the entry to A is 1.5 meters, which means that we need to set each segment or each unit length to be half a meter so that it's three uh three units as distance otherwise it would be 1.5 and it can't take 1.5 it needs a whole number okay um it has a velocity of 80 units per minute um that's defined uh here uh where is it uh sorry the speed of the conveyor belt is 40 meters a second. So it's 40 meters a second, but each unit is 0.5 meters, so it moves at a velocity of 80 units per per uh, per minute. Sorry, per minute. Yeah. So it's it's 80. It's, it's just two times that. The cell size is one, but the maximum cells occupied is two. And like we talked about earlier, um, all of these have a number of cells is two. So we need to set this conveyor max cell occupied as two. The accumulator length, accumulation length is one. Um, this is accumulating, uh, it's a accumulating type. There's not accumulating and accumulating. Basically what that means is that parts don't go into like little bins on the conveyor. They actually just uh, basically bump into each other if there's too many and they kind of stack up against each other. Um, that's not really defined in the, uh, uh, in the project guidelines, so I just chose accumulating arbitrarily. Um, it doesn't seem to affect the model as the bottleneck by far is machining times compared to the accumulator. The accumulator never really gets jammed up. Um, yeah, so that's basically covering conveyor one. Conveyor one is the entirety of this conveyor belt, this uh, circle, and that's uh, specified as uh, in this in the segments the lengths so now we go to um the segments it follows conveyor one dot segment that's just the name of it the beginning station this doesn't really matter but it's the beginning station is enter conveyor dot station which is this one and like i said it moves clockwise so it goes to a then it goes to b then it goes to the exit c d and then the entrance so again starts at enter goes to A, B, then it touches the exit, then it goes to C, D, and then back to the entry. It doesn't necessarily stop at each one of these. These are just ways to define the distance lengths and how it moves. So it moves in a in a clockwise circle around this line. Um, and the lengths are uh, in units, and each unit is half a meter. So this length is 3, which corresponds to 1.5 meters, which is this distance. This distance from A to B is 7 meters, which means it's 14 meters, so on and so forth. From exit conveyor to enter C, it's uh, 2.5 plus 3, which is, uh, what is that? 5.5, which is 11 units, which is, it's 11 units. So that, that's how these are defined. They're all essentially, one unit is half a meter, so this is 4 meters, this is five or uh, 4.5 meters. 5.5 meters, 1.5 meters, 7 meters, and 1.5 meters. 
that handles the kind of segments. Um, those are the distances that I chose. Um, it's 0.5, 1 across, 7 across, 1 meter, 0.5 down, 2.5 down, 3, 4 across, 2 across, 2.5 up. Um, that's just the way I have it. Uh, it doesn't really tr transfer this section because it doesn't really make sense to me that it's a unidirectional line and it goes up this thing and then back. Um, feel free to disagree with me, but that's just the way that I have it. Um, next is the transporter. Um, it's transporter one, like we talked about. The number of units is three. Um, I chose three for this model because there's a maximum of three lift trucks. Um, this actually can be varied to answer questions four through six, and it needs to be varied. And then each of these has a velocity of 3.32 units per second. Um, each unit for the uh, transporter is actually in meters. Um, the segment distances and the transporter unit, dis the, the segment unit distances and the transporter unit distances are actually separate. So you could make one unit of conveyor be 20 meters and one unit of distance for the transporter be just one meter. So they could be different. And so I basically, didn't have to work because uh, transporters you can use fractional or uh, decimal velocities. Um, I uh, didn't have to make weird math with you know each unit is half a meter. Um, it travels 3.32 uh, meters per second, and that's based off of this uh, six kilometers per hour. If you convert six kilometers per hour to meters per second, it's a uh, 3.32 meters a second, I believe. I'm actually going to check that. Six kilometers an hour. Six kilometers an hour to meters per second. It's 1.66 meters per second. Um, but did I double? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. So all, again, all the units are half a meter. Um, so it actually uh, travels essentially twice not twice the distance. It each each unit is half a meter, and so the speed is twice as fast. Um, so it's three point three two. So it's you know it's one point six 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 times two. So it's three point two plus uh, units per second, and each unit is half a meter. Um, and then the distances are defined here. This is the distance table. Um, I created these distances somewhat uh, arbitrarily. Um, there is a cap, there is a, a parameter, or a, not a parameter, a constraint where things can't touch. They have to be a, a meter away from the conveyor belt and machines, each of the paths for the forklifts. Um, so I basically just drew with a ruler um, the paths that the, the forklifts would take. They can be different. These values aren't set in stone. Um, they're, but they are up to our interpretation, and these are my interpretations. Um, I have a picture which I posted in the group chat which outlines all of these. Um, yeah. Lastly, we get down to the animation area. Um, why is this zoom not working? There we go. Here's the animation area. Uh, it starts here. Each thing is, uh, each station is modeled. So we have station one, or not station one, the create here. So this is the transporter. This is station one. Um, and then we have the enter the conveyor belt. A, you know, B, C as follows. And then the conveyor exit the uh, inspection station, and then the main exit. Um, these uh, are, let me back up. These are just the ways that the model basically starts and ends at. Um, all the red lines are representing the segment distances. And so the little part that I have, which looks like a little metal cylinder over here, uh, this is the entity, uh, and it basically falls around this little track. 
um, that I created for it to follow. Um, these are the conveyor belts used in the machines. These are the cues for each um, part. And then this is the cue to enter the conveyor belt. Um, and then the inspection station, which is just a little like meter. Um, it's kind of just random. And there's no, there's only a loading and unloading time. So there's no like conveyor belt on and off here. It's just a station, in my opinion. And then the exit. Um, yeah, this is station D, C, B, and A. Um, this is the transporter that I used. Idle and busy are the same picture. Um, and then for the entity, it's just picture dot metal cylinder. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, oh, the sequence. Uh, the sequence, okay. This is going to be the one that's the most confusing and makes the least sense out of everything. But it works. Um, even though item entity 1 is assigned sequence 1, it actually follows the path of sequence 3. And I don't know why this happens. It just happens on my computer or this model for whatever reason I originally defined sequence one as part one sequence sequence two as part two sequence and part three sequence is, is sequence three sequence for some reason it's flipped I have no explanation it took me like an hour to figure out and to correctly figure out which route each one is following but I figured out that part one when it gives the attribute sequence one for some reason follows the path for three but in the decide nodes, it still knows to route it in the correct ones. So this sequence had to be ordered differently, but this decide is fine. Even though it follows entity one sequence, it follows one. Where is it? Uh, it follows sequence one by title, but it follows the steps down here. And then sequence three follows uh, sequences one steps. It's really weird. I can't explain it. It's the it's the one part which I just don't have a logical answer to or an explanation. It's just how it works. I've tested it um, like very rigorously where I deleted each one of these and made sure that one was following the correct path. And this, this works. This is just the way that it works. Um, I can't explain it other than that. Those are the two main problems. This and then also the unconnected exit point error from the decide nodes. Um, I think that's everything. Um, when you go to run it, if you go to setup, report, or uh, run, yeah, project parameters, turn on resources and conveyors transporters. That way, when you run the report, uh, you can see how each one is used. <coughs> and yeah, it's probably not going to show anything because I haven't run it at all, but that's it. Um, otherwise, I believe. That is it. Um, yeah, there's one other thing I'm trying to think of. Oh, uh, here. These paths follow my drawing. Um, and yeah, these are all the distances for the transporter. So for this guy, and all the red ones are for the conveyor belt. Um, any other questions that you need, just reach out to me, but I think this is sufficient. It's also 28 minutes long, so uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video.